Did you know? Crash Team Racing originally had nothing to do with Crash Bandicoot whatsoever. The game's developer, Naughty Dog, had a three-game contract with Universal Interactive for the Crash series, and by the end of the deal, their relationship wasn't as solid as it once was. Universal received more money for each Crash game sold, and Naughty Dog only received a fraction of the profits for all of their work. Management issues, coupled with the fact that they told Universal they wouldn't renew their contract after Crash 3, charged Universal to respond spitefully. Development of Crash 3 literally took place in Universal's hallways, hardly adhering to the contract's required office space. The team at Naughty Dog would often work 20-hour days with no weekends, and Universal refused to pay for the air conditioners after hours, which led to servers shutting down in the LA summer heat. After finishing Crash 3, the team parted ways with Universal and soon begun work on a racing game that started out with generic block-headed characters. The team took their game engine and presented it to Sony, who were keen on making the game a Crash title. The two companies reached an impasse, with Naughty Dog only willing to make a Crash game if Sony obtained the rights from Universal. In the end, Sony managed to secure the rights, with Naughty Dog co-founder Jason Rubin saying that it was a good move that benefited everyone. The team then decided to have a final take that moment with their bosses at Universal. The Naughty Dog team got Rubin a remote control car for his birthday, and one weekend when it was just the team at the studio, they took the car to Universal's conference room and drove it around the table. Needless to say, Universal were furious when they came into work that week, but the team found it pretty funny. The team internally referred to the game as Crash Racing and Crash Kart. Sony's marketing team came up with the Crash Team Racing name, but Naughty Dog would simply refer to it as CTR after the name was chosen. According to Ruben, the entire development process of the game was eight months and six days. He also said it was one of the most fun games he'd ever tested, but one of the toughest to develop. We reached out to former Naughty Dog developer Rob Titus, who gave us some details about the game's production. For four-person multiplayer, CTR's engine would downgrade the character models to achieve a playable frame rate. The engine used for the game was only used for CTR and let the team create large-looking textures that were actually made out of much smaller ones. The sand on the beaches, for example, are made out of 32 by 32 pixel textures that align to make what looks like 128 or 256 pixel textures. This allows for more detail without eating up the system's 2 megabytes of memory, a problem that plagued the game in several other ways. Much of what the team learned in this engine would later be used for Jack and Daxter, which was in its early stages during CTR's production. There were a number of ideas that didn't make it into the final product due to either system limitations or the tight schedule. Characters like Pola and Pura were intended to play in a single cart together, but ended up being split into two races. Both Komodo brothers were planned in the game as well, but only Komodo Joe showed up in the final game. The starting lines were originally unique for every track, but it was decided to use just one design for all the tracks. Not only did the team not like how they looked, but having varied starting lines was inconsistent and could impact gameplay. Titus, having created the title's tracks, also made a shorter ice track by reusing assets from the other snow levels in the game. The unused track formed a figure eight and took roughly a day to put together. According to Titus, the level was 98% finished, but there wasn't enough time for the team to debug it and test it properly, so it was shelved. During CTR's early prototype stage, the team also created a replica of Crescent Island from Diddy Kong Racing to see if they could make a stage of that scope on the limited PlayStation hardware. It was only ever meant to be used for testing, but it's believed to still exist on one of the studio servers. Since Naughty Dog knew CTR would be their last Crash game, they planned to kill the franchise using the main villain, Nitrous Oxide. By making something ridiculous like an alien as the antagonist, they figured people wouldn't take the game seriously and move on from Crash, but to their surprise, the plan backfired. Rubin said, We actually tried to kill Crash. In CTR, we said, What won't anybody believe? Because this was our last game. Let's put aliens in. We'll bring in an alien. No one will like Crash after that, because there's an alien. This'll be the end. We've jumped the shark. The alien came into CTR. Everybody loved it. For for years, rumours persisted that Oxide could be unlocked in the game, but he was actually never intended to be a playable character. According to Naughty Dog President Evan Wells, the team briefly considered the idea, but it all came down to technical limitations of the PlayStation. His racetrack, Oxide Station, is much bigger than the other tracks in the game to accommodate his size. Interestingly, the stage itself was cut down to less than a third of its original length to fit in the game. Oxide can be made playable through the use of a cheat device, though he plays extremely buggy and only works on certain stages. After beating Oxide's ghost on every track through time trial mode or by using a cheat code, the player can access the scrapbook feature. The scrapbook chronicles Naughty Dog's time with the Crash series and includes pre-console conversion music for all four Crash themes, pre-console being the original high quality version of the track before being compressed and reworked for the PS1. These tracks wouldn't be heard in their entirety until Crash composer Josh Mansell uploaded them to his SoundCloud years later. The PAL version of CTR shortens the scrapbook by a fair amount. The NTSC version is five minutes long, but the PAL version is a mere two minutes. This was 
done to fit all the text, sounds and supported language across Europe on the game's disc. Dutch was one of the languages supported, though this decision was questioned by the Dutch, as English is widely spoken in the Netherlands. In the PAL region, when choosing a language, it's possible to back out of the menu and choose no language at all, which results in text showing up as hyphens and slashes. Even stranger, this also makes the boss characters swap heads with each other, with the exception of Ripperoo. Like with most Crash games at the time, the Japanese version has several changes from its English counterpart. The Japanese version uses a completely different model for the title screen, and the game itself goes by the name Crash Bandicoot Racing. Ripperoo also speaks in actual sentences, unlike the English version, where he was intended to speak normally, but instead just used his trademark laugh with subtitles. Interestingly, Ripperoo's voice in Japanese is provided by Katsumi Suzuki, the current voice of Nintendo's Diddy Kong. <laughs> Other changes include difficulty revisions, different character icons, and like Crash 3, a set of bonus videos. The Japanese scrapbook also has artwork not seen in any other version. Penta Penguin was a character initially known to a select few, as Penta could only be unlocked via cheat codes. Penta was so well hidden in the fact that he was unknown to both Sony and Naughty Dog testers, and his initial code is unfinished. He was planned to be tested in-house like the other racers, but apparently slipped by both parties and made it into the final release, bugs and everything. When Penta grabs a mask power-up, Uka Uka's icon is shown, but when activated, Aku Aku surrounds him instead. Penta also has different stats in different territories, having the same stats as Polar and Pura in the NTSC version, whereas in PAL regions and Japan, all his stats are maxed out, which was the original intention. Penta also has placeholder dialogue that found its way into the game. While he typically makes penguin noises, you can occasionally hear Penguin Ye 1 and Penguin Ye 2 play in a monotone voice. Penguin Ye 1, Penguin Ye 2. These lines were done by programmer Gavin James, who had done placeholder dialogue for the rest of the cast. The CTR team actually weren't aware of the mistake until they played the retail version and heard it for themselves. Rob Titus told Did You Know Gaming, When we went gold, I got a copy of the Mars to play on my PlayStation at home. The first thing I did was unlock all the characters, including the penguin. I started one lap, heard Gavin's voice, and said, Oh sh! I called Daniel Airy immediately, but it was too late. The first batch of 500,000 discs were being burned. This error was fixed on the PAL and Japanese releases, but it's still present on the North American re release on the PlayStation Network store. Crash also had a history with the Pizza Hut chain through the PS1 era, with brand tie-ins starting as early as the first Crash game. Crash was typically paired up with their promotions for stuffed crust pizza, with Crash appearing in Pizza Hut commercials. In 1999, a demo disc was given out to people who dined at Pizza Hut, with one of the demos being CTR. Within the demo is an icon for an unused spring weapon, which can be added back into the game via hacking. It seems to have been removed late into the game's production, and according to Rob Titus, it was removed because it didn't really add anything to the game, comparing it to the feather item from Super for Mario Kart. There's also placeholder dialogue found on the disc for Coco Bandicoot and a single line of dialogue saying, yeah, which was likely a recording of Gavin James yet again. Let's go! Yeah. The female Bandicoots themselves all get their names from women who had a hand in the Crash franchise, primarily in Sony marketing and PR. Amy comes from Amy Matsumura Blair, Liz from Liz Ashford, Isabella from Isabel Tomatis, and Megumi from Megumi Hazoya. Megumi Hazoya in particular was responsible for creating the Crash dance for Crash 1's Japanese commercials, which Naughty Dog then put in the games from Crash 2 onwards. CTR was a bestseller in all regions, selling over 4 million copies in total, but it did surprisingly well in the state of Utah. Sony had noticed a spike in sales from the region that holiday season, and it's said the sales spike was due to the state's Mormon population. The CTR initials are shared with several religious phrases like Choose the Right and Christ the Redeemer. It seems as though Mormon parents bought the games for their kids thinking they had some religious significance. In the Insane Trilogy, the trophy names for the gold time relics reference various lines from the original CTR commercials, including Is there a problem, Granny? Buckle up, boys, buckle up, and Booyah, Grandma, Booyah. But the celebration of CTR wouldn't stop here. On December 4th, 2018, PlayStation Access presenter Holly Bennett shared an image on Twitter. The picture showed a pair of furry orange dice that resembled a car ornament next to a card that read sliding into the Game Awards on 612. Many fans put two and two together and took this as a tease for a CTR remake reveal at the Game Awards. And sure enough, a full-on CTR remake titled Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled was announced at the show, slated for June 2019. Did you also know that you could win a PlayStation Classic and a PlayStation 4 Pro by checking out the video on screen? Yeah, there's no there's no other trivia I have for you, sorry about that. If you like the sound of my voice for the last couple of minutes, then please consider looking at my channel, Cat Icarus. I did a video on CTR a long time ago, so the video is a little bit dated, but uh, I still think it's alright. You can have a look at it if you want to.